Welcome to I-45! Would you all like some StarCraft? We may have some for you today. As this amazing final is on the verge of beginning here at Insomnia 45. It's gonna be great, it's gonna be amazing. We have two players from the UK. Well, one is not so much from the UK, the other one isn't, but we'll get to that shortly. We have searched wide and far this entire weekend to get some of the best players out here for your entertainment. And if you guys are at home or on Team Liquid watching this stream this right now, do and do go to vote.multiplayer.co.uk and vote on your favorite player for this particular tournament. The casters behind me will keep an eye on that. In the meantime, though, let's go and introduce our players. Are there any Fargo fans in the house? Well, give him a big up because here he is, Fargo! Fargo, you uh, have two map disadvantage here. Do you think that you are going to be able to pull this off versus Bling? Yes. Fair enough. Ladies and gentlemen, give him another applause. Take your seat, Fargo. On the other side of the stage, he's about six foot one. He wears black and yellow. His name is none other than Bling. So much rage in the house tonight, Bling. What's going on? I don't know. I'm, a, I'm meant to be doing it for the UK, but obviously they like Lithuania more. But. Well, your, your opponent is already sitting down there. You got a two-point advantage over him. Easy peasy or difficult, difficult opponent? I don't know. We'll see. Anything can happen. So Anything can happen. Put your hands together for Bling. Take your seat. We have gone far and wide to find you some of the best UK and European talent to bring this game to you tonight. Obviously, we've got our production proof, but that's not really what you're looking for. We got on one hand, we got Martine Mumbles and Jarosa to give you the game. Gentlemen, take it away. Oh, look at that introduction, isn't that fancy? Absolutely amazing. A specs, fantastic as always. And we have an incredible finals to bring to you guys here tonight. Gonna be setting up the first game. I believe the map is gonna be on Entombed Valley. Yep, we are gonna start that off with that map. Uh, loser pick, I believe. Well, uh, the loser bracket uh, yeah, finalist, right. I guess, uh, is gonna get the first pick here. Um, we didn't have any vetoes because we only have seven maps in the map pool. So best of seven, <laughs> that means that... Uh, nice and convenient, so yeah, the entire map exactly. pool to choose from here. And both of these players, of course, coming through some incredible opponents on the way to the grand finals. Uh, we saw, for example, a very resurgent Lao today. Yep. Uh, plowing his way through the brackets, but Bling ultimately able to take him down. And, of course, Fargo. Oh my goodness, team kill after team kill in the lower bracket, determined to make his way back into the finals, and we've just been invited, ladies and gentlemen, to the first game. Yeah, we got the game on host and up, so uh, it won't be long before we do go live, 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 just to uh, see the term for Counter-Strike there. We are uh, looking over at the players, you see that Bling is still kind of uh, setting up, taking his time, just uh, making sure he's in the right state of, uh, well, zen meditation. And as soon as the players are ready, we're going to be getting into game number one. Guys, we know you've waited long enough. The game is going to begin in just a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, who wants to see some StarCraft? Let's make some noise! That's the crowd. That's the crowd. I, I'm just saying, I didn't hear it down during the League, League of Legends. Well, the countdown's this... just, just, just begun. I mean, I'm hearing some blinking in my ears. I didn't really hear the crowd the first time. What was that again? Did you want to see a game? There we go. First map, loading now. So yeah, we are going to have uh, Fargo here, the hometown favorite, apparently. Clearly, <laughs> the guy's a little bit biased here. All right, guys, we're going to be getting into the first game. The map is Entombed Valley and spawning over here in the top right as the Red Terran player. Ladies and gentlemen, representing Team Infused here at Multiplayer I-45. Give it up for Fargo! 
His opponent spawning in the bottom left-hand corner of the map as the orange Protoss. Ladies and gentlemen, in the grand final, starting 2-0 up from the winner's bracket, representing Team Dignitas, it's gonna be Bling! That's a lot better than his initial uh, introduction. <laughs> Seems like he turned some, uh, some heads at least. It's the adrenaline, man. Yep, so PVT here in the finals to start off with. Uh, quite glad that we didn't get a mirror, mirror uh, finals. Uh, of course. Exactly, we, we've been casting a fair number of those in the group stage. Yeah. And then some PVZs as well coming along, but we have, of course, no Zerg player in the finals now. It is going to be a Terran versus a Protoss. Yeah, of course, uh, on, on Dignitas team, they probably did hope for a PvP finals dream, actually going out uh, in, what was it, the semi-finals in the loser bracket? Indeed he did, and uh, Dream, of course, one of the, uh, I believe, the second seed at this tournament, incredibly strong player, but some very, very uh, high-level talent going down into that lower bracket, and actually fighting back up was an incredibly difficult task for him, ultimately not able to make it back, but Fargo uh, really pulling his weight, uh, team killing a couple of his teammates in the process, of course, that's a little bit unfortunate, but hey, when they stand in your way. And of course, going into this grand final, we had uh, two very large teams vying for top spots, Dignitas and Infuse, and it's wholly appropriate that one of each are going to be battling it out on the main stage this evening. It's hard not to get a few team kills going when Infuse actually made out four out of the last eight players in the tournament. It's just an incredible play coming out from Infuse here, uh, showing us determined to let everyone know that actually yep. Dignitas aren't going to be able to walk this and look at what they've done. As a team, they should be incredibly proud of themselves. He's had an absolutely amazing tournament run, and I'm sure they're incredibly happy to see their player here. I've been just to focus on the game. We do see that there yep. is a single gas here for Fargo coming up, so we are not going to see uh, the uh, gas levels expand. Of course, racks into expand, very popular. Uh, can, you can still do that with gas, of course. Uh, your options are still well open. Fargo, though, preferring a 1-1-1 style very often. Uh, we talked to Leon, his manager, early on, says that, hey, Fargo, if he 1-1-1s, he's never lost. Ever. Well, that's, uh, that's a big claim to make, and I suspect that at some point during the series that's going to be put to the test. We'll have to wait and see. Bling going for uh, what we've seen throughout this tournament as a little bit of a trademark with two probes in both gases, taking them fairly early on, but only using four probes to mine them at this stage of the game as he chrono boosts out the first stalker. I'm going to be grabbing that warp gate research. Mm -hmm. Four, of course, uh, two. Uh well, as you said, two probes on one assimilator is a little bit more efficient than having three on, just because the, they don't have that waiting time that you see with that third worker there just standing around being lazy. And he's been using that uh, throughout today, although we oh. have seen him. Oh, no, the scouting SV going to be able to get picked off here by that first stalker. Very nice there from Dignitas Bling. And we've been seeing him do a little bit of this uh, quite a fair bit today, although sometimes we've seen him get one assimilator with two probes on mm -hmm. and then going into uh, a bit of a modified one gate expand. Oh, look at that. And where we were saying that you know, uh, just uh, racks into expand is very popular in TVP, we are going to see Fargo pull off his trademark 1 1 1 just to start the series off with. Well, you know what they say about the 1 1 1, Martin? It's pretty. Good. <laughs> it's pretty, pretty good. We are meanwhile going to see that gateway into expand here. Two more gateways being added on to just making sure that uh, he does have that production, of course. Uh, well, considering the double gas he got, Robo next, right? Uh, it's entirely possible. I mean, we, s we now have uh, three harvesters going to be working away on that gas in the base of Blink, so deciding he wants to ramp up that gas at this point in the game. So uh, that three-gate robo build, of course, very, very solid. Going to want to try and defend against this, and uh, a 1-1-1 one, one, one could be something he's fearing in this matchup. We'll have to wait and see. Fargo now, though, going to be producing a medevac out mm -hmm. of his starport. He's got Hellions and Marines incoming. He's going to be aggressive, of course, with the Marines and the Hellions with that uh, medevac. Now, trying to probably going to try to do some kind of eleva elevator play, attack into the natural, try to get uh, the Hellions towards the mineral line, do some damage. Yeah, there are a couple of uh, there are a couple of options Terran has here. Quite often we see because Marines obviously move slower than those Hellions, you would get the Marines picked up in the meta back and the Marines dropped in the back while the Hellions harass at the front, mm -hmm. which I believe is what we're going to be seeing in this case. All the Marines going to be picked up in that meta back and now going to be moving towards the bottom of that map there. But sometimes we see Hellion drops coming out of there with the Marine pressure in the front, and we even have uh, occasional options where Terrans have been known just to barrel down the front door with this kind of build. So we're going to have to see where Fargo is going with this as the uh, robotic facility about to finish for. Blink and an additional two barracks finishing up for Fargo. Yeah, look at the, the follow-up here from Fargo. Adding on those two barracks, that's uh, extremely one-base play. Uh, well, I guess uh, he's hoping to be extremely aggressive off this one-base. We do see that he's actually getting Banshees out now as well. That's a really aggressive follow-up. 
And the three, yeah, the three um, Hellions gonna be doing a little bit of poking. They are waiting behind those shrubs there, just north of the natural, but the medevac is now in prime position to go into the main base. But look, there are two stalkers and two sentries as well. Instant guardian shield going up, and Fargo is going to have to abandon this drop. A PDQ, and oh, the medevac actually gonna be going directly above these stalkers. Will the medevac get picked off? The stalkers tried. Medevac going to be able to get away. A couple of units going down for Fargo here. Not too much damage done. No, uh, when you do open up with that one-on-one, -on -one, you get your expansion, of course, much, much later. And when you do no damage like this, you know you're in, uh, in a bit of a, a tough spot to, mm. to continue the game. He needs to be a little bit careful now. Every unit is sacred. Uh, Dignitas Bling, of course, on two bases to Fargo's one. The current work account, by the way, is 42 to 25 in Bling's favor. So Fargo really has to try and make something happen here very quickly indeed. Otherwise, Bling's superior economy is going to be able to propel him into a fantastic position. In the yeah, game. this better be a godlike Banshee if he wants to come uh, get a comeback going <laughs> in this game. We'll have to wait and see. Of course, no cloak going down on this Banshee. That gas being spent elsewhere at the moment. Got non-stop Marine to tank and Banshee production. This follow-up push from Fargo is going to be incredibly strong. And uh, he basically wants to just go out and try and kill Bling with his first push. Yeah, purely if you look at the unit tab right now, you see that there's nice soccer side, three sentries. It's a decent composition, but if you look at purely the marine count of uh, Fargo right now, 50 marines out already, three tanks, that's pretty beastly off one base. Those additional two barracks really helping bring those units in, and it looks like Bling going to be able to turn away this Banshee. Sadly, it's only going to be able to get out with a two kills. Uh, at least both of them are workers. Yeah, that's two more than he had before, so <laughs> definitely not worth it so far, though. Of course, you invested in that Banshee, you want to get some value out of it. So far, not the case, uh, but then again, he, he's constantly putting on the pressure still. Right now, we do see that Bling is actually moving out with his stalkers. He needs to be a little bit careful because that Banshee can pe peek back in at any given time. Oh, and the Observer, nice pick up on those two Hellions there from Bling. And it looks like he's going to be engaging this force head on at the moment. The Observer, of course, at the bottom of Fargo's ramp. Bling actually saw the exact timing oh, of this. Oh, the SCVs. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Ladies and gentlemen, bit by bit has made an appearance at the I-45 because Fargo is going to be bringing the SCV train to the party. Yep, this is all in this gets. Uh, there's no, no coming back from this. Fargo saying, well, you know, I know in a, I'm in a top position. The position right now. I need to win it now. Oh, but look right, at this army composition it. from Bling. He has two immortals and a third one going to be coming out. Guardian shield going out all around the army, picking off that tank. And it looks like the second tank almost able to go down there, microing those tack. He's only a single tank left for Fargo in the back here. And Bling getting a fantastic concave. The immortals have been focused down, but a decent number of stalkers remain. And uh, Fargo looking like this attack is going to fizzle out. He brought an awful lot of SCVs here. The number of workers left for Fargo is seven. And Bling going to be able to successfully hold off the 1 1 1. One Dignitas playing, ladies and gentlemen, going to be taking the first game, and he takes a 3-0 lead in these grand finals. Good game. We just see that, uh, you know, we just see trademark 1-1-1 one, one, one play by Fargo, but not ending up uh, getting a win here. Uh, Leon, uh, what's up with that? <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out, guys. I mean, uh, Fargo, of course, very good with those 1-1-1 one, one, one builds, and, uh, well, as we mentioned before, he's uh, famed for not having lost, but uh, that just got challenged really strongly by Bling and uh, taking game number one off of Fargo. Will yep. Fargo be doing it again in game number two? We'll have to wait and see or if he's going to change his strategy up. Man. Well, we see, we see him looking at a map pool right now. Actually, he's spying on him a little bit. We do know that his favorite map is actually uh, Antigua Shipyard. It's still on the map pool, so he That's might right. just pull that out next. And Antigua Shipyard, not exactly a map that you would typically expect someone who likes 1-1-1s one, one, no. uh, to go for, but he, he does really like that map. He has a strong preference for it. Do you think we'd see the same strategy? Uh, well, basically, he's going to try to play mind games. You know, he's going to go with what Bling expects him to do and then turn it around and do uh, basically a 180 on that. Well, Fargo in a uh, difficult position here in these uh, grand finals because at the end of the day, Bling now has to win one more game to walk away with his I Series title. And Fargo going to have to pull off a string of victories to challenge it up. But we've seen him do that in the lower bracket earlier on today. There is no reason why he can't do it now. We'll have to see if he'll be able to pull it off. Yeah, Bling now in, uh, what, four match points? Yeah, four exactly, match points. Exactly, yeah, four it's, match uh, points for Bling. That's quite something to overcome. It's going to be pretty difficult, but hey, Fargo has earned his place here, and he might be able to pull one back. Guys, if you would like Fargo to pull a map back against Dignitas Bling, let's have a cheer. I'd say that's some decent support. If you want Dignitas Bling to get a clean sweep, of the I-45 Grand Finals, guys, let me hear you! Wow. Oh, the home favorite. Uh, apparently, a lot of people don't, 
just don't want more StarCraft. They're like, oh, let's yeah, finish yeah, it now. Yeah, no, no, let's finish it now. The bar's open. Ah. It's fine. Don't worry about it. What is up with that, man? I don't know, <laughs> but we're going to be going into game number two, guys. The map is indeed going to be Antigua Shipyard. Yep, here we go in the bottom, uh, so in the bottom right corner here, we do see Bling spawning, of course, representing Team Dignitas as the blue Protoss. You know, across from him on the other side of the map. Now Fargo as, uh, of course, representing Team Infused. Not looking too good in the series so far. He's going to have to pull off a miracle string of four wins here against Bling. Bling, who has har hardly lost any kind of uh, any matches. I'm trying to think if they're... If they're if you haven't dropped a map so far yet. Um, I believe Bling has One dropped map, right? a single map yes. going into the Grand Finals. So, uh, that wasn't DGP, by the way. It was a, a proxy, proxy two racks? It was, when he tried well, to go one, Nexus yeah. first against Lau, I believe Yeah, it was. exactly. So, uh, one of Fargo's teammates taking a map off Bling earlier on in the tournament. We know that Bling isn't invincible. Fargo, though, having to pull off a string of victories to pull this off. But sometimes, when a player is backed against the wall like this, uh, they are able just to sort of free themselves in pressure and go, all right, I've got nothing to lose. I need to pull the string of victories together. All hopes and dreams doesn't matter now. I'm just going to play my best and focus on the game. And sometimes we see players really excel in those kind of conditions. So it'll be interesting to see if Fargo can pull one back here. Yeah, pro gaming mentality is, of course, a huge aspect of, uh, of the game. I, I gotta say, if I were Fargo, I'd be panicking a little bit. <laughs> I, I don't know, like I just did my favorite build. I just did the one-on-one, -on -one, mm. which I know is so strong, even though it's not typical in this matchup. Yeah. It, it, I just threw everything I had at him, and it came up short. Yes, sure. What, what tricks do I have left, basically, if you're Fargo? It, it's gonna be very tough. He's gonna have to pull basically an audible here to get something done. Well, speaking of tricks, I don't see any buildings down here for Bling, do you? It looks like we might be going for a little bit of a Nexus first oh, build. Man. And yep. the last time Bling dropped a map in I-45, in fact, the only time he's dropped a map, that's exactly the build he went for. Yeah, his mom's going to scold him if this backfires again. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Bling's uh, mom, of course, a fairy heart in the chat. It is her birthday today as well, so happy birthday to you. Let's see if Bling can deliver the perfect birthday present. Well, you know, from that prize money, I'm sure you can uh, buy quite some flowers. Those are expensive flowers, man. I know. Wow, where do you shop? <laughs> I know. Oh my goodness. And we do see uh, Fargo actually looking like he's going to be going for a one Rax expand here. So both players are favoring that quick expansion, going to be going up and playing a macro game. Bling being particularly bold, going for a Nexus first before anything else. Yeah. Let's see if it pays off. It's a, it's a little bit unfortunate for Fargo. If he went for something more aggressive now, it had, uh, it'd have a better chance of paying off than it did last game. I agree. I think, uh, I mean, Loud demonstrated that very well with the two racks pressure against Bling, uh, able to take uh, that off. I believe that map was on uh, Daybreak, wasn't it? Yep. Yeah. We do have Forge and now a gate going down for Bling as well. Forge gate. We did actually find a, a, road sound, a, a, road, yeah, a road sign just outside of the event. We did indeed. About 10 minutes walk from here, we were walking on Friday night to dinner at the Frankie and Benny's and we passed a road literally called Forge gate and then we risked our lives standing in traffic to get a few photos done yeah right now people should be just walking outside just trying to find that street so they can <laughs> yeah take don't take do that, that wait until after the games guys <laughs> yeah. uh so blink gonna be taking both of his gases in the main base right now deciding now is going to be the time the nexus now has a couple more probes mining at it and meanwhile another two barracks being put down by fargo so a build we've of seen course. quite a fair bit today one rack to expand going to into additional racks you have to get the additional racks if you go tech after you're basically playing very unsafe because the, the idea is basically hey i'm investing a lot into getting this super early command center how do i get a decent amount of army out by the time that uh, he's going to be able to, to knock on my door exactly well, the only read the only thing you can do is basically get more production out really quickly and get those cheap units get those marines out in high quantity and the danger of teching in this position is of course if uh if your opponent goes some very strong one base player or something like that and you didn't scout early it's although of course these guy did yeah you're gonna die a pretty painful death so both these players going with huh. strong economic builds uh, Bling taking the slightly larger risk here with that Nexus first, but going to be paying off for him in the short haul at least. And, yep. uh, and armor guess. first. Armor first here actually being researched by Bling. So, uh, wow. Yeah, no, I've actually seen him doing this before uh, in some of the games that we casted. It's an interesting choice to go for the armor first. You see it a lot of Protoss players, of course, going for uh, some kind of plus one attack timing, but uh, rarely do we see them go for armor first. Um, it's entirely possible, of course. Armor first, uh, very indicative of a lot of Protosses who like to get uh, charge lots later on in the game to be able to absorb as much damage as they can at the mm. front of the army. But of course, we don't see a Twilight Council get down for him yet, but one might pop down a bit later. We'll never know. Yeah, we do see the scout there getting taken out by Bling Bling, trying to get another uh, probe in there. Couldn't quite pull it off. Now we do see a photon cannon wall here being built by Bling. Of course, Bling did see the number of units, the number of Marines that actually went after his probe. So it's a, a bit of an idea of what Fargo is out on the map right now, but Fargo actually falling back from this. Wow, that's very interesting. He's got, um, he has got a tech lab gone down on one of the racks and he just started stim. 
So uh, he's gonna be have that on his uh, on his Marines a little bit soon. We don't see another tech lab go down on the other barracks, so he's not gonna be getting combat shield or concussive shell concurrently. Uh, and he has gone up to getting taking his third gas now as well. So Fargo possibly looking to get some upgrades on the board at some point soon. We'll have to wait and see, or maybe the gas could be uh, for a quick starboard because the factory is now going down as well. Mm -hmm. I do see the single engineering bay indeed, indeed going down. I would love to see a second engineering bay here, but uh, we just see. Who was it? A plus one uh, attack timing worked really well in a TPP early in the tournament. Well, managed to actually get a snipe on two forges, so who knows. The upgrade advantage now is uh, going to be swinging a little bit in Blink's favor. Of course, he also has that plus one army down, getting plus one attack right now. Ooh, and a robotics facility being cancelled by Whoa. Bling in the natural there. Just as it finishes up, he instead is going to be going for gateway heavy play. Ladies and gentlemen, Bling has instead decided to go for seven gateways. Plus one armor has now been researched, and plus one weapons gonna be coming up as well. So it looks like Bling gonna be going for possibly a seven gate uh, one one timing. That's that's interesting. Fargo definitely did not get a scan or anything off on that robotics. Basically just Bling deciding, well, Let's just go mass gateway. Yeah, if we if we look at Bling's vision, he hasn't actually seen that much in Fargo's base, so it's not like it's something he saw inside the base of Fargo that made him change his mind. Nope, he's, he's just deciding, hey, I maybe maybe it's a, a, the kind of deal where you're like, well, hey, I'm, I'm three games ahead right now in this series. Let me go aggressive and see if I can uh, crack him under pressure. It's entirely possible, and uh, those four gateways now are going to become warp gates. Bling are going to be able to warp in from this forward pylon as soon as it completes. There is, of course, another one further back. We have a decent amount of zealots and, of course, plus one armor, as we were talking before. Uh, really going to be helping him, but plus one attack going to be finishing in five in-game seconds. Yeah, uh, definitely the upgrade advantages here for Bling while he goes in. So he, uh, he has a good time on this. I wonder if he can actually get past this wall, though. The wall is actually quite sturdy. There's two bunkers behind it. Um, in Fargo's position, he might even get a third bunker now. I don't know. Oh, is he going to move out? Ooh, that, that would not be good. He has got the factory in front, though. He sees that this pressure is coming in from Blink. There are a decent amount of sentries here. They haven't had time to get too many force fields up. Let's see if he uses them to his advantage. And no, Blink actually going to be pulling back. Nice little Sim City here from Fargo using their supply demons and engineering bay to his advantage. And he's going to be loading up a couple of medevacs. Going to try and drop behind this. Okay, so he's going to test Blink's multitasking ability. That's, uh, that's a pretty solid decision to go with. Blink, meanwhile, still knocking on that front door. Oh. Peeking up once again, see what he can pick off. Significantly fewer units, and both medevacs are actually uh, gone, so there isn't any healing in this army. Fargo trying to pull SCVs to see if he can repair that bunker, but the SCVs aren't repairing just yet. Now they're getting to repairing, but is the DPS from Blink too great? And the bunker going to be going down. The medevacs now coming back, dropping the units down on that low ground, but Zealot's going to be coming out to try and take care of those. And Blink, with, still with a pretty large army, SCVs being pulled in from Fargo, and could this be the end? Could Blink be taking his I-45 title? here right now 84 supply to 62 in blink's favor fargo pulling the rest of his scvs and mark time this looks like it could be the end yeah this is the beginning of the end it looks like fargo now trying to pull out the three or so everything uh, including the kitchen sink here at blink's forces but blink's is going to keep warping in oh, and no. now that he has his momentum it's just going to get worse and worse yeah this seven gate timing incredibly strong from blink some nice uh, units pit doing a lot of damage from the high ground here actually that blink is ignoring right now but to be honest he can afford it he has nearly double the supply of his opponent he is 80 to 42 in favor right now and uh, wow Bling just gonna be camping out at the natural because why not he can just regroup a second force and go up the ramp whenever he is ready he does not need to finish this game now he wants to strengthen his army and wait oh he is now gonna be going up the ramp with those zealots those uh, that bio army able to get a little bit of shot off on that low ground but not too much and we now have all the SV being pulled in the main stand. this is going to be the last stand the stalker is getting a decent choke point the zealots in front SCV is on hold position now they're going to be attacking the rest of the army. The problem is Fargo is down to 40 supply and the production structures are now being camped out. SCVs predominantly in the front now and so many of them are going down. Only 14 workers left for Fargo and Bling is going to be popping in reinforcements. More Zealots going to be able to tag more of the damage here and I think this is going to be a GG. Yeah, there's no recovering from this unfortunately. Fargo gave it a good, good attempt there but with a quick, uh, well, technically uh, a quick 5-0 here as a... GG, congratulations yeah, coming out of Fargo, and ladies and gentlemen, Dignitas Bling going to be I-45 champion! I gotta say, impressive play by Bling. Uh, deciding to go for that gateway all-in basically uh, paid off extremely well. Uh, yeah, I gotta question Fargo's decision to head out with the medevacs there. Yeah, as soon as he loaded up in the medevacs, Bling took a look at the front door and... There he is, look at, look at this guy, ladies and gentlemen. First thing he does, gets up, not even celebrating yet. Handshake for the opponent, well played, everybody. Dignitas Bling, your champion.
He doesn't even seem happy, does he? Bling's still in the mindset, man. You don't just snap out of something like that. The guys played amazing StarCraft yesterday and today. One of, in fact, both of these players, the only two in group stage yesterday to make it out of their groups 8-0, not dropping a single map. Yep, and then actually uh, a bit of an upset. Fargo going down to Louder. Indeed, TVT. I mean, uh, yeah, Fargo uh, being sent down to the lower bracket, but then uh, it's almost like something woke up in him. Of course, Lau being uh, very resurgent yesterday, not performing quite up to the level we normally expect him to, but on, uh, on Sunday, earlier today, he just started storming his way through the double elimination bracket. Uh, absolutely very incredible good. stuff coming out of him. And uh, teammates, Dream, of course, on stage as well, giving his teammate the congratulations there. Yeah, finally we Bling. see a smile from Ling there. We do, there we go, it's on his face now. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> finally won that I series. There we go, yeah, the race fist there. <laughs> That's what we like to see. We knew it would pop out eventually. And yeah, the, um, when we saw the medevacs go down, uh, go, try and go around for a drop there from Fargo, yeah. we noticed that Bling uh, poked up the ramp a second time. And the first time he poked up the ramp, he saw that the medevacs were there. The second time he poked up the ramp, he saw, hang on a second, they're gone now. They're My gone. army's going to be in a superior position. And just picking the perfect timing, Fargo using, you know, using a little bit of initiative, trying to get his army round the back. But uh, unfortunately, Bling still camped out at the front door, immediately yep. sensed what was going on, even though he didn't see the medevacs disappearing. The lack of them at the front gave him uh, the initiative to attack, and uh, that's all she wrote in game number two. Yeah, exactly. And it, that was Fargo's favorite map, so you know he gave it his best shot. We've seen him try his favorite build, the 1-1-1. We've seen Indeed, him try his, yeah. his favorite map. Nothing he could do here to actually uh, take this tournament. The 1-1-1 one, 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 uh, on the first map on Entomb Valley was interesting. The problem was the initial drop with the Marines didn't actually end no. up doing anything. Bling, absolutely sick game sense there. Had a couple of stalkers and sentries inside the main base. The, saw the medevac before it even came close. You, to you, got, about you gotta remember, these players are of course quite familiar with each other. This is like uh, part star sense, just tingling and being like, oh, I, I sense the medevac going, but also just knowing the play style, knowing that probably that Fargo prefers to go with that kind of 1-1-1 one, one, one style, and that those... he can't pull it out at any given time. Yeah, and those are the things that sort of separate a good player from a really great player. And we saw excellent defending from that initial ha harass in game number one. Yep. The medevac had to loop all the way back around and join the main army. And of course, normally in a one-on-one, -on -one you see like the marine tank Hellion, uh, sorry, marine tank Banshee even composition. But a couple of Hellions were dotted in there because he was expecting to be able to do some economic damage with it. Wasn't able to do so, bling it, getting those immortals out with his superior economy at that point and uh, able to take that game as well. Yep, and uh, I gotta say, uh, it a dominant showing by Bling throughout the whole tournament. Oh, very much so. I mean, I believe he only dropped a single map yeah. in the entire tournament. What an incredible performance. And uh, I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly, Bling has been waiting for an I-Series victory for quite some time. He's going to be savoring this one. And I believe he also said he wasn't drinking until after the tournament. But he is going to be doing so now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, once again, Dignitas Bling! And we'll be right back, guys, with the prize-giving ceremony in just a moment. Don't go anywhere.